Coming up, we'll see Carson Wentz and the Philadelphia Eagles as they take on Dak Prescott and the defending NFC East champs, the Dallas Cowboys. So with that, let's head over to the heart of Texas, massive AT&T Stadium in Arlington. On the call, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. We are sandwiched between Fort Worth and Dallas, Texas in Arlington at the luxurious AT&T Stadium. Obviously, they do everything big here in Dallas, and the introduction to the Cowboys, no exception. They're set for football in Big D, as their guys will do battle with Carson Wentz and the Philadelphia Eagles. Calling the action from up top, Brandon Gunn and Charles Davis with you. We got an NFC East matchup here, CD. The most difficult division year to year to really predict. In fact, no team has repeated as division champ since 2004, 15 years ago. And that was the Eagles, correct? Yeah. They went back to back. Well, let's be honest about it. The way that these teams match up, the way that they draft, all trying their best to win their division. Very similar styles. Eagles won the Super Bowl not that long ago. Washington with good health. They were winning the division last year late in the season. How about New York with the Giants trying to make their move? And of course, Dallas won the division a year ago. But this division is so interesting with Saquon Barkley in New York. Did you know that the caddy of Tiger Woods wore Saquon Barkley's jersey underneath his caddy outfit at the Masters in 2019 when Tiger won for the first time in a long time. Let's be honest about it. Saquon Barkley, he's pretty popular. The spotlight shines on quarterback Carson Wentz as he and the Eagles take the field. This is a crew that is now 3-3. Three and three. Had a chance to get to 4-2, and two, but they lost to Minnesota in Week 6. Charles, you saw this game, and Carson Wentz, he'd had four straight weeks of a sub-60% completion percentage. He did pick up the pace, but it's a loss. It's a loss because they couldn't run the ball as effectively as they had been in previous weeks because that Minnesota defense is so stout up front. But I thought Carson Wentz played awfully well. Despite the pressure he was under, used his legs more, and probably more than what Philadelphia fans wanted to see with the injuries he's had. But he exited the pocket, ran for first downs, kept plays alive, and brought his team back from a big deficit to give them a chance. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Working from the gun, Wentz throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. And a look at the defense for the Cowboys. Sean Lee's one of my favorite players, and I don't mind saying it because I love his versatility. I can move him inside at the linebacker position. I can move him outside. I can rush him off the edge, rush him up the middle. He can drop into pass coverage. In fact, his versatility was on display even in his high school days where he was a big-time high school basketball player that had a chance to play in college as well. So Trump their opening drive. This is third and nine. From the gun, it's Wentz. He's going to float. The well, this is taken in. It's complete. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. Well, things are looking pretty darn good on this first drive, aren't they? Came right out, set the tone this time with a big pass play. And if the peek behind the curtain that they gave us or their game plan, I don't think that's going to be the last one we see. I think you're exactly right about that. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Now Howard. So he got free of one tackle but couldn't do a whole lot else. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. Cowboys and Eagles, of course, such a great rivalry. Last year, the Cowboys got the better of the Eagles both times that they met with Philly coming off their Super Bowl title. But in weeks 10 and 14, it was Dallas beating Philly by a single possession. This is Howard on second down. And still about three yards shy of a first as the four-yard pickup brings it to third down. That's a really good job right there. Just kept stringing that play out, pushing further and further towards the sideline. Really good fundamentals by that defense. He was trying to put his foot in the ground and turn up field. He just couldn't. No, they really had a picket fence in front of him. No room to find to get upfield. Wentz going to try and throw on third. 
And that is incomplete. You absolutely have to have this early on, right? Third and short, they elect to throw for it. And that's normal NFL football. They're going to throw on third and short, but you've got to hit it, don't you? Yeah, in the first quarter, like you said, to set the tone, can't connect there. So on comes the Eagle kicker, Jake Elliott, on fourth down. From the right hash, this from 48. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. So the next time we leave one of those coaches' meetings and, and we're walking out in the hall and you're like, how can we spend so much time talking about special teams? Here you go. This is why. This is why, right? And look, I'm, I'm right there with you. We hear it every time we meet with coaches, but it is a big part of it. And look at how early in the game this occurs. They block a kick, and not only does it set a tone, it sends a message for the rest of the game. Yeah, so much for our first points of the game. So now a chance for points in the opposite direction after the blocked field goal. They run with Ezekiel Elliott, last year's NFL rushing leader. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. Second down, Elliott. He can't bring him down. The weight room does work. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A gain of 13. It's a first down. A tough run by Ezekiel Elliott, the fourth overall pick in the 2016 draft. If you watch tape of him in college, you saw plenty of those runs because I know the highlights showed him in the open field breaking away from people, but that's how he wore down defenses. Those exact type of runs. So after a good run by Zeke, another first and ten. Here's Prescott. That one complete to Elliott. And a gain of four gets him right to the midfield stripe. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Prescott now from the 50. And that's Elliott, complete. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. The last completion actually lost a yard, so now they'll need to convert on third down. Prescott from the gun. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. And they do get this across midfield of the 49, but a small consolation prize as he's well short of the first. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. So on fourth down, here's Chris Jones to punt it away. Back deep is Darren Sproles. And this will be out of bounds at the what here? The 12-yard line. 
Eagles take the field again, and I want to revisit what we said earlier about their start now at 3-3. Three and three. Not an amazing beginning of the season, but hey, they're still tied for the lead in the NFC East. Big one Sunday night, week seven at Dallas, and head coach Doug Peterson, he already said, hey, we're going to go down to Dallas, we're going to be ready to play, and we're going to win that football game. What do you make of the comment? I think that Doug Peterson is telling his team that he still believes in them. You know what a tough market it is in Philadelphia. You know what it's like with expectations around the league that this is a Super Bowl-ready roster and they're at 3-3. Three and three. He wants that team to know that he believes in them and that they're still talented enough to go out and get it done. And in a sense, putting himself on the line and trying to take the pressure off of his players because you know what kind of questions they're going to face all week going into that. He wants all those questions to be directed to him. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Sproles. And a nice gain there as he'll be taken down just shy of the 20. Demarcus Lawrence in on the tackle. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. And on third down, the Cowboys bring in an extra defensive back. Shotgun now for Wentz. Well, the two men come together, and it's incomplete. Excellent work defensively brings up fourth down. As my dad used to tell me all the time when you're going ready to play a big time game, especially when you have one going into a dome setting, better strap it up tight because that crowd can really affect things. Especially on third downs like the one we just saw there with the incompletion. On fourth down, out is the putter. Cameron Johnston to boot it away. Back deep for the Cowboys, Tavon Austin. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. This is brought in at the 21. A good return there, 17 yards. And the Cowboys will take over the football with a first and 10. Cowboys taking the field again here offensively. And speaking of Dallas, we discussed their week six loss to the Jets earlier. That's a head scratcher. Even though it's on the road, nobody saw them losing that. And now all of a sudden they're at three and three. And when you look for positives, that's what you just hit on. They're three and three and still tied for first in their division with Philadelphia. And if you really want to make things go away, at least for a little while, beat Philadelphia, take over first place by yourself. Oh, by the way, they play Sunday night in Dallas, excuse me, in Arlington, Texas. That's a big ball game for them, a big ball game for Philly. And the bottom line is, if you win your division, no matter what the record, you go to the playoffs. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Throwing. Prescott. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yardage. Terrific read better execution and done with a lot of enthusiasm wasn't it absolutely they saw it all the way ran to the football and caused a nice play for lost yardage the last completion actually lost a yard so now they'll need to convert on third down out of the gun here's prescott got his man complete over the middle that's elliott and he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. It's a gain of 12, and the Cowboys pick up the first. Well, using Zeke Elliott in the passing game, that's something Cowboy fans are getting used to. Last year, 77 receptions. And you think back to his rookie season, he had 32 and then 26 his second year. But he's really on the uptick. Prescott going to come up first and 10. And he's a perfect five for five here to begin the game. They'll try the sweep with Elliott. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. 17 yards on the play there, and the Cowboys have a first down. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync 
as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front linebackers, you're exactly right. It'll be a very long night for the defense because someone's going to run for some big yardage. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. A loss of two there, second down. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop. But that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything. So it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. Second and 12 after the first down pass play went backwards for two yards. Now Elliott. And he'll go down at the 28. So they get half of what they needed. It'll be third and six upcoming. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. Prescott fighting Witten, and he has another first down as they'll get the ball down to the Eagles' 15-yard line. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push-off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. Prescott going to come up first and 10, and he's completed all seven of his passes thus far. Toss left to Elliott. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Pretty effective run there, and now they can start to smell that end zone. Pound the rock. Make sure you use your old line to set the tone of dominance and physicality, and pound the rock. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. From the shotgun, again to Elliott. And this carry not as productive. He swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. I think what we just saw there, partner, was linebacking speed that can trump O-line power. We see that at times because he filled the gap before the offensive lineman could get to the next level and take him on. Prescott on third and two. Completes it to Jason Witten. And he has the first down before he's tackled at the five. They only got two, but that was enough as they'll convert to make it first and goal. At first glance, I thought he just used his size in order to win the route, but he also had a little subtle move in there as well. Made the defender think he was going one direction and was able to track the ball in another. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. Here's Prescott. That ball is caught. It's Gallup. Touchdown, Cowboys. A five-yard touchdown catch as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. There was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Brett Maher on for the extra point. And this is up and good to make it 7-0 Cowboys. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it culminates in a Dallas touchdown.
Following the touchdown, here's Marr to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll wind up getting an extra couple yards here for his trouble as he'll bring this one out to the 27. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. And last drive, three and out. Still a goose egg on the scoreboard. How do they break that goose egg? They've got to find a way to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers, get them some space, and try and make a first down and get some momentum going. It's been a struggle for them throughout the game, and that three and out on the last possession, that told you just how stalled they are on offense. So who will step up here? We'll see. Wentz off the fake handoff to Howard. And he finds his tight end. It's Ertz. And out across midfield, down to the 45. A very solid gain of 27. So on that play, defense was in the zone. They ran a crossing route offensively, but the defense there, you got to be good with communication, don't you? You certainly do, and it's not something that is really evident when you watch it on the screen, but everyone's talking, communicating, pointing, and it keeps you from chasing receivers because you have a specific zone you have to cover. When a receiver's in your zone and he crosses to another one, you got to let your guy know they got a completion there, but I like the discipline they showed to stay in their proper areas and then make the tackle. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Eagles in possession as they've got it with a first and ten. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Now wins. This one complete to Sproles. Seven yards on the play, and that'll make this a second down. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Now it's Sproles. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. Well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. The Eagles on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and four. Throwing now is Wentz. This is caught by Jackson. And down to the 20 he'll go before heading out of bounds. A big pickup there for the Eagles first down, 18 yards. The Eagles into the red zone for the first time. First and 10 right at the 20. Delay of game, offense. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still first down. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. Running with Howard. And he's going to take this down to about the 17. A good comeback there after the penalty. Nine yards, and it's second and six. Some runs are blocked so well, 
you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. They'll run it with Sproles. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Leighton Vander Esch, third in the NFL in tackles as a rookie last year, there on the stop. Well, the returns for the Cowboys on Leighton Vander Esch have been pretty good so far. You know, a lot of Cowboy Nation questioned when they took him number 19 overall this season to go instead of Calvin Ridley. But Leighton Vander Esch would get 140 tackles last year, franchise rookie record for Dallas en route to a Pro Bowl appearance. And Howard stopped short. He didn't get there. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. How about the fellas with the stars on the side of their helmets rising up on defense? We always hear about the Cowboys rushing offense. Their rush defense is pretty good as well, I think, because they're so cohesive. Defensive line linebackers really work well together. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. And Elliott puts this one through. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So they do get three points, but that's now three drives with only the three points. Not a ratio that's going to win you many ball games. Not at all, Brandon. And think about it this way. We all know payoff is the key, right? And wouldn't we love to have the concession on every T-shirt that's been printed in football that says finish on it? Because that's the mantra everywhere. Got to be able to finish drives, put points on the board. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. This fielded at the two. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Zeke and the Cowboys ready to begin their next drive. And it may just be the second quarter, but he's in his zone well on his way to eclipsing that 100-yard mark. And when a back has a game, as we're witnessing right now, his name's going to be in the books. But it's really a collective deal, isn't it? Because that the means line. he's getting plenty of blocking, a lot of help from his teammates, but he's making the most of it. Yeah, he's made the most of it to this point. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. They'll start the drive with Elliott. And this will go for five up to the 33. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Second and five now. Prescott. Throw left side complete. It's Elliott. No gain on the play, and it'll bring up a third down. Well, he caught it right at the line of scrimmage, and before he could even think about advancing it forward, he got hit. Great tackling, because that's what you're taught. Don't give up yards after the catch, and most offenses make a living off of yards after catch. Those hidden yards that may not go into the score sheet, but they count big for moving the ball and stretching the field. Really nice open field tackle. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. They had enough yards for the first down, but a clutch hit right there defensively. Jars it free. No first down. Out now comes the Cowboys punter as he's on here to punt it away. And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. The Eagles offense now gets set to head back onto the field. And it's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. 
and that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. Winston, the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their own 20 yard line. To throw, it's Wentz. It's caught by Aguilar. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. It's an Eagles first down on a gain of 11. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed-out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route-running savvy. Here's Sproles. And the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. I enjoyed watching Robert Quinn in pregame warm-ups with you down on the field. Did it surprise you how tall and angular he is? You wouldn't think he'd be able to play against the run that well, would you? But he can, and he showed it right there, didn't he? That's that wrestling background he has. He understands leverage as well as anyone in the game. A big-time wrestler in high school. He didn't lose very often. Three-time heavyweight state champ in South Carolina. Throwing on second and 14. Wentz caught by the tight end Ertz. That catch good for five. It's third down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. The Eagles on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and ten. Now wins. It's complete. It scrolls. It'll wind up being stopped for no gain, and it'll lead to a fourth down. They try to swing it out left into the flat, but the defense, they were very principled there. It felt very West Coast offense, didn't it? You know, you know their expression, right? On a West Coast offense, when they throw the ball, it's either going to be a touchdown or a check down, meaning they like to press it downfield. If they don't have it, swing it out, which is exactly what we saw there. But how about the great pursuit and tackle to make a nice play? Here's Cameron Johnston now as he's on to punt for Philadelphia. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. Ezekiel Elliott gets ready to go again here on offense as he shuffles onto the field. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. He doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back, and that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. Back near his goal line, it's Prescott. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. On a jet sweep, here's Cooper. And that one covered beautifully. Their defenders stayed home, and they'll stop him behind the line. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And it'll be a third and about 13. The Cowboys on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is going to be third and 13. On third down, Elliott. 
And not much there as he gets it up to about the five-yard line. Three yards won't be enough here as that'll bring up fourth down. But they got off the field on third down. An excellent job, an excellent defensive series. We always talk about adjustments and usually only at halftime. But the best teams adjust series to series. And on that series, they adjusted so well that they got the job done in fine style. Out now comes the Cowboys punter as he's on to kick it away. So a short drop, but he's able to get it out, and this is a good kick. Now Sproles. And when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. Jordan Howard and the rest of the offense heading back out there. They've given him some touches. They haven't had a lot of success on the ground. Do you maybe keep going to that well, or do you mix it up more? I think you mix it up more, try to loosen things up. Get the defense to react to other people, other plays, but don't forget about it. That's your horse. You know, Secretariat lost twice in his career. <laughs> so educational. That's very true, kids. Look it up. The Eagles in good position to start out as they come up first and 10 at the 40. Wentz now to throw. Try to get it to Jackson, and it's intercepted. Cheetah Bay Awuzie with a pick. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Cowboy defense has a touchdown. Well, partner, I do know this. If you're a defensive back, you have more chances to make a team now than ever because people are using five defensive backs, six defensive back packages. Not exclusively, but way more than before. That was a nickel package there, and what a pickoff. Why is that? Why are they using that more? Because more people are throwing the ball on earlier downs than ever before. This has become a passing league, and because of that, more defensive backs on the field on most plays. now to add the extra point. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. Wentz and the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Now Wentz to try again after the pick six. It's brought in by Jeffrey. And they're able to get this one across the 35. It's a gain of 13 and a first down for Philadelphia. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Here's Wentz to throw. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Brandon, it looked like he had his hands on it for a moment, but let, let's face it, that was going to be a tough catch all the way because of the presence of the defense right there as he was trying to haul it in. Yeah, nice job to force the incompletion. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. They run with Howard. 
It's a gain of about three, but it's going to leave him with third and still seven yards to go. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? The Eagles on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and seven. Throwing his wins. And down he goes. They bring down Wentz on the sack. Defensive end Demarcus Lawrence applied the heat. And they weren't in zone coverage. They were in man, and each man did his job. And that looked like vintage, old-school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team. They had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a defensive player of the year at the other, and they just locked people down. Here's Cameron Johnston now as he's on to punt for Philadelphia. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And great special teams work here. This is knocking on the door of the five. They'll spot it at the six-yard line. So they'll play the field position game here as a very nice punt is going to pin them back. Yeah, it's almost like watching a game of tennis or do you prefer ping pong, you know, back and forth like that? That definitely was excellent, wasn't it? There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. A good job in the passing game. Decent job in the running game, but really they've been more effective uh, through the air. We'll see if that shifts at all as this goes on. Thus far, it feels like they're calling this game in reverse. Normally you run to set up the pass. Here it feels like they're passing, hoping to set up the run and be more effective later on in the game. Yeah, you can do it both ways. We usually talk about it in the reverse, however. No doubt about it. They start on the ground with Elliott. And he takes this just about a yard shy of the 20. 13 yards and a first down, Cowboys. For Zeke, what a first three years he's had in the NFL. Last year, his second rushing title, 1,434 yards. Not as many as 1,631 that he had as a rookie, but still his yards per game average was the best in the National Football League. So a much rosier picture now after that last play. Here's first and 10 at the 19-yard line. Delay of game, offense. And that'll set him back five. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Still first down. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. After the penalty, it's Elliott. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 15. We've got a 14-3 ball game with two minutes left in the opening half. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Jonathan Coachman. He's in Orlando, and he'll have our EA Sports halftime report. Throwing on second and 14, Prescott. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. 15 yards on the play, first down. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Ezekiel Elliott, but it's going to be second down. 
That is the first time that they've targeted him that he has not come down with a catch. He's caught everything that's been thrown his way. A dominant pass receiver that can break down any defense because when he's doing that kind of work, it really hurts you on the back end. And even though it's an incompletion there, I think they're going back to that well. Dak dropping this one off for Zeke. They face a third and four after that last completion gets them six. Draw play, Elliott. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Out now comes the Cowboys punter. He's been terrific so far. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. Alshon Jeffrey working his way back out there now to help lead this offense. He's been good so far to this point in the second quarter. Need to get him even more involved, maybe? I would agree with that. Definitely. Uh, yeah, it's not even a question for me. The way he's playing, he's doing a nice job. Increase things. More touches, more opportunities. Maybe that can reverse things on the scoreboard for them. They'll try to ratchet things up then maybe here in the second right, quarter. Right, right. On first and ten, here's Wentz. And he'll hit Jeffrey complete. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. 12 yards is the pickup. Good for an eagle first down. One of the selling points of the in route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. down Wentz and that'll wind up incomplete trying to give his man room to run under it but it's second down this defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry seems to be the front and the back end pass rush they've been able to get home and they're taking the ball away in coverage as well I love how you put it together the front and back working in sync only way to play good defense on second down it's Howard they get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line, lower than the defensive front. They moved them and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. A give to Howard, and that play went nowhere. Losing yardage, it'll be back at the 36. Here's Cameron Johnston now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. Here's the Dallas offense now heading back out onto the field. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. And just 25 seconds to go in the half now as they've got it first and 10. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And defensively, they're just looking to keep him contained as they're able to get him down. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. A seven-yard pickup brings up second and three at the 27-yard line. 
And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. So we have reached halftime here in an 11-point contest as we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman in our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This game's had a little bit of everything thus far and certainly plenty to look forward to as the teams are right back out there for the second half. So we'll get right back out there as well as we'll turn it back over to Brandon Godden. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Cowboys will get the football first here, and they have the lead as well as we are underway in quarter three. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Out come the Cowboys now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 27. He'll buy some time right. And he'll avoid the tackle there with a slide. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. Well, he did a nice job keeping his eyes downfield, waiting for someone to get open. But once the pressure forced his eyes down to see the rush, it was time to make a break for it. Check, check, block 54, block 54. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. On second down now, it's Elliott. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral, also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other backs in the league. They keep on the ground with Elliott. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. You you Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. And plays like that are exactly what this defense needs here early in the second half to give it a little spark. I think their halftime adjustments, what they talked about, maybe it was just a little inspirational speech. Who knows? But looks like they're ready to go. Second and 13, Prescott, he's got a man complete. It's Amari Cooper, and he'll go out near midfield at the 49. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. Looking back to Cooper's numbers from last year after that trade, he ended up playing nine games with the Cowboys in 2018. 725 yards, six scores. Also had the 100-yard game in the playoffs against the Rams. And if you add up the numbers between the two teams last year, he was over 1,000 for the third time in four NFL seasons. And he has another first down as they'll get the ball down to the Eagles' 41-yard line. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Hey, 
Prescott now 14 out of 17, 82%, and it's first and 10. Prescott from the gun. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. We've seen good cover skills on display throughout this game, really from both teams. And there's another nice example there of them making it difficult to complete a pass. Here now is second and 10, again from the 41. Prescott yet again. That's complete to Cobb. Here's play number seven on the drive. This is third and seven. And again, it's Prescott. And that is incomplete. Brett Maher now for the Cowboy field goal. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And he has got it from 55 yards away. That was never in doubt. Of course, the door for Maher was opened after a little bit of a surprise move the Cowboys letting go of Dan Bailey last year. Yeah, Maher took over in the preseason. He's from Nebraska via the Canadian Football League where he kicked for four years. And I saw him personally make two game-winning field goals last season against Detroit and in Atlanta. After the main field goal, Marr back out there to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. So here are the Eagles now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. <laughs> Wentz now on first down. That's caught by Jackson. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road in just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made. And that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves them with a third and three. Well, they still have time to get them established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. And an alley to run! And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Philadelphia picking up the first on a gain of 15. They held him in check in the first half, but that's his longest carry of the game right there. So would this be the definition of fresh legs since he didn't get much done in the first half? Now he has a great opportunity. He's taking full advantage of it. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. It's Christian Covington who notches the sack there. 
hindsight is 2020, partner. Maybe they should have kept it on the ground again. Well, it almost looked like the O-line was run blocking again. I mean, they opened up a big hole last time. This time they opened up a hole, and the quarterback got sacked. Protection certainly going to need to be a bit better here on second and 16. They'll run it now out of the gun. They get just a yard back there, and now they'll be looking at a tough third and 15. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature and make sure you don't get hurt. To throw his wins. And he connects with Ertz. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. And a nice gain of 21 yards. So there on that play, offensively, they ran the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage. So as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver's crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. 12 yards is the pickup. Good for an eagle first down. The coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, but when he when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Wentz now on first down. And he finds his tight end. It's Ertz. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Watch the screen, watch the screen, watch the screen. Again, it's Wentz. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Well, he'd been targeted quite a bit on this drive. And finally, I think the guys on the defensive side, they said no more. They slapped the double coverage on him. Made it very tough for him to get the ball. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now, Wentz again. And this is going to be incomplete. Sort of looked like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. Now to try the Eagle field goal, Jake Elliott. And remember, he had one blocked earlier. The kick by Elliott is good. And his second field goal here gets him back within 11 now. It's 17-6. to six. So a good drive there to begin quarter number three, but they're only able to shave three points off the lead. Well, something's better than nothing, all right? They didn't play particularly well in the first half, but they definitely need him to step on the accelerator now and play a whole lot better. To the field goal. Here's Elliott to kick it away. This one fielded at the five. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28 yard line. And let's gaze our attention on Ezekiel Elliott. And there are the
the numbers, got off to that torrid hot start. We thought he was in for maybe a career day, not the case. No doubt about it. It almost looks like a misprint after what we saw in the first half, but let's give a little bit of credit to the guys on our side of the ball. They went in at halftime, made a few adjustments, and you know what else? They didn't lose their confidence in how their ability to play because a lot of times you get beat down in the first half, it gets ugly in the second half. They've come out with a new resolve and a renewed determination. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Another carry tonight for the workhorse earlier. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling him in the huddle right now. Check, check, walk 54, walk 54. Go, go, go. They go to Elliott again, and he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They'll run with Elliott. And an alley to run. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It's a gain of 12, and the Cowboys pick up the first. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick, he's been decisive, and he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. Completes it to Jason Witten. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. 14 yards, good for a Cowboy first down. Boy, you got to think that having the 37-year-old veteran Jason Witten back at tight end is going to be great for Dak Prescott for plays just like that. And you think to last year when Witten wasn't there, it was kind of a rotating carousel. They had Blake Jarwin, Jeff Swain, Rico Gathers, Dalton Schultz. But Witten back out there and doing his thing again. Nigel Bradham brings him down. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. A 20th carry here for Elliott. And for one of the first times all night, he is going to go nowhere as they bury him behind the line. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And that will bring up a third and 11 situation. Well, from my vantage point, that's just one bad play by the offensive line and a running back who's had a, a lot of good ones tonight. Yeah, but that doesn't mean he's not going to be ticked off, nor is the offensive line, because to me it's a lot like a no-hitter, right? Pitcher's throwing a no-hitter, gives up a hit late. You're so close to accomplishing everything you want and don't quite get it done. They'll come back with a vengeance on the next play. And this is caught by Witten, the tight end. And this play comes to a halt at the 33, and obviously that's well short of the first down. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, like hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. From the left hash, it's an even 50-yard attempt. The kick by Marr is good. And that will extend their lead even further. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted. But I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yeah. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent, 
that we made them specialists. Well, and now those 50 plus yarders seem easy for some reason. After the made field goal, Marr back out there to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. Then he'll take this across the 25, couple extra yards up to the 27 yard line. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. And last time able to get three. That's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Wentz and the Eagles now with a first and ten at their own 27. They'll begin the drive with Howard. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. From the 29, Wentz. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on, catching the ball and not much run after the catch. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Catch on second down, but it didn't help at all. And now they're looking at third down here. Working from the gun. Wentz caught by the tight end Ertz. The completion there winds up a wash, and it'll bring up fourth down. And that's when it's fun to play defense. When you're able to diagnose a play right from the beginning, get all your guys to the football and spill the play, that's when you have a lot of fun playing on that side of the ball. Here's Cameron Johnston now, as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And this is a way, it's a high kick, and he got all of it. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at the 20. Now Prescott. It's caught, Cooper. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. 13 yards and a first down, Cowboys. Dak Prescott last year against Philly. Boy, biggest game of his career passing yardage-wise. 455 yards, three touchdowns in a 29-23 December victory over the Eagles. Prescott now a perfect 8-for-8 eight eight to start the second half. Not bad. First and 10. Now a man open down the middle of the field. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Up 
That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. This is Elliott. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I'll bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Check, cross, cross. A first down throw for Prescott. Got an open man, the tight end, Jarwin. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. Out of the gun, it's Elliott. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? First seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. Here's Elliott. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. This drive's taking more than three minutes off the clock already as they come up on second down. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. And that's Elliott, complete. They'll get a couple yards on that one. And it'll be third and ten. The Cowboys on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This is third and 10. Throwing, Prescott, and that is incomplete. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Out now comes the Cowboys punter, as he'll come on to kick this one away. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. Wentz and the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their own 24. From the gun, it's Wentz. It's caught by Jackson. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. Ten yards there and an eagle first down. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. Throwing on first is Wentz. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. It is tough to complete pass against zone defenses. The windows that you see open, they shrink pretty rapidly. How about being able to hit a moving target against a zone before the next guy can get there and make a play on the ball? Not easy for any quarterback, no matter the situation. And there, the defense won the battle. Wentz will try again on second down. Completes it to Aguilar. The reception good for seven. It's third down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, 
it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Wentz going to try and throw on third. And down he goes. They bring down Wentz on the sack. Demarcus Lawrence able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. Here's Cameron Johnston now, as he'll come on to kick for a sixth time tonight. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. Now, if you're a fan of punting, this game's for you. He's been out there quite a bit. That one may be his best yet. Yeah, he certainly got his leg loose by now. It kind of reminds me of my college football coach, John Majors. He loved the punting game because he liked the positioning, the field position, and he loved to play defense. will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads. Bowled over a few people. Look at that one. Right up the gut. Saw him through three quarters. No reason to lighten up now. Off play action to Elliott. Here's Prescott. And this one complete to Witten over the middle. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the 20 at the 18. Seven yards there and a first down. Well, a clear running situation. Try to take time off the clock. He ran the previous play, set that play action up nicely. Boy, did they ever, because they had shown the ability to run the football. So now you lose your keys as a defense. You dive for the running play, and they hit him over the top. The throw over the middle, taken in. And he'll be corralled well upfield right around the 40-yard line. A well-executed 22-yard game. Still throwing the football here, even with the big lead. Yeah, I know you and I came up in a different era, and we think about sportsmanship and all that. Other people think about fantasy points and getting their numbers. <laughs> That's all they care about right now. Scott. He's going to find Gallup here complete. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. 17 yards on the play there, and the Cowboys have a first down. When you have someone throwing it that well, that confidently, you don't have to call the game in fear at all, do you? You just go ahead and play. Yep, confidence with a lead to throw it here in the fourth, and boom, he's on the money. Yeah, you don't have to tuck your head in and take and go like turtle at this point. You can just go ahead and play. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 43. They'll throw again, Prescott. That's caught once again by Gallup. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A really nice gain of 25 yards. They have the nice cushion. <laughs> they just want to pour it on right now, still throwing the football. And I know my background says, why do you need to do this? Just go ahead and run out the clock and get a win. But as many people pointed out to me, it's a video game, man. <laughs> go ahead and put the numbers up. Sportsmanship, not an issue. Exercise those fingers. Prescott going to come up first and 10. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Elliott. And all the way down inside the five to the four. A 14-yard gain there as they look to improve this 14-point lead. 
starting to look like this drive it may be the final nail in the coffin well this is why you work out so hard right this is why you spend all that time in the off season this is why you have those otas and mini camps for these situations these scenarios to run someone into the ground and secure a victory a good chance now to put this game on ice this is first and goal prescott and he is into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. From four yards out. And the Cowboys, they push out in front further. They were still throwing with a comfortable lead here late, and now that lead even more comfortable. And your first thought is, is there bad blood that went into this one ahead of time that maybe they're seeking some revenge or they just don't like them? But the other thing that always hits me is, are they worried about playoff positioning, right? Are they worried about, do you need enough points in case there's a tiebreaker that comes into play later? Mar on for the extra point. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21 points. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it's capped off for the Cowboys' touchdown. Following the touchdown, here's Marr to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And the decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he'll get this only back to the 20. The Eagles coming out as they get ready. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Oh, poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But some, hey, listen, there's, some, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. Winston, the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. A pass there over the middle to start things out. And yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right to the yard so that flag will cost him 15 and it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask any part of it that's going to be 15 yards The Eagles offense sent to begin their next drive and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. The blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner, everything has to fit together just right. But on that play, the defense was able to disrupt things and hold it to a short game. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. Wins. Yeah, he finds his tight end. It's Ertz. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Well, it certainly feels like there are stars at the tight end position that were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, 
and some toughness to go across the middle. You put it all together, you got a heck of a tight end candidate. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. They're already slim. Hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down. They'll go for it. It's Wentz. And his guys are going to take over at their own 48-yard line. Well, this defensive pressure has been constant all game long. The pass rush, the coverage, they've all been excellent. And now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. Here's the Dallas offense now heading back out onto the field. And they had to go a long way on their last drive to score the touchdown. This time they get at least a little bit more of a cushion with field position. I have to think that with this field position, after what they did on the last drive, they might want to take a shot right now and try and cut down the length of the drive. Good starting position for the Cowboys here as they come up first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 48. Now Elliott. He's got a first down and then some inside the 40. And finally brought down at the 38. 13 yards and a first down, Cowboys. So the Cowboys in possession of the football here as we get you reset. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win. Elliott going to bite off about seven on that one. A good run on first down. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave them with a second and three. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get him behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Brendan, every great running backs coach I've talked with has always talked about when you have great vision, you're not consciously thinking about your cuts and your moves. You're just doing them. And I think that's what we're seeing tonight. He's about running them into submission, uh, hasn't he? You took the words right out of my mouth. I was just going to use that phrase. He has run them into submission. Wave the white flag. The first down run for Elliott will net him about five yards. It's second down. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. So this one will end in a victory for the Dallas Cowboys. And it was their defense that led the way, allowing just three points that lone field goal in the entire second half. And remember the old adage, offense sells tickets. Defense does what? Wins championships. And in this game, maybe a championship wasn't won, but a game was by the defense, right? Held them to just a field goal. That's a heck of a job. I mean, when they went out there with that determination and a pretty good game plan, pretty good idea of what they wanted to accomplish. Just love the execution, love the tenacity, love the way they finished. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. It's a win for the Cowboys as we sign off and say so long from Arlington.